So in this uh, video, we're going to talk about the antipsychotic medication. Specifically, we're going to talk about the atypical antipsychotic. But let's take a look at like how many classes do we have for antipsychotic medications. Um, conventional and atypical antipsychotic. Conventional antipsychotics are old drugs. Um, they were um, researched and invented about like quite a few years ago while the antipsychotic medication atypical antipsychotics are newer, newer drug to treat the psychosis and uh, psychosis means this m drugs are mostly used to treat schizophrenia um, and there are two different parts in the conventional antipsychotic as well which is the phenotizing and non-phenotizing let's take a look at about the atypical antipsychotic medications so mechanism of action mechanism of action of these drugs is really unclear there are multiple um, neurotransmitters this medication works on one of them is dopamine second is serotonin and adrenergic receptors in the brain so this medication will block dopamine serotonin and adrenergic receptors in the brain and this drugs helps in treating both positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia while we looked at the different types of antipsychotic medication like conventional and atypical conventional antipsychotic are mostly used to treat positive um, positive symptoms of the schizophrenia while these medications are used for positive and negative both now one of the things to remember when we take a look at the side effects of uh, this psychotic medication is dopamine dopamine is a neurotransmitter in the brain that works for the balance uh, muscle movements uh, and muscle coordination uh, brain will um, brain uh, in dopamine in the brain will coordinate all these muscle movements in our body if there is a deficit of dopamine in our body or uh, in uh, excuse me in our brain then it will cause the incoordination. Our brain will not be able to think and coordinate all the muscle movements if there is a deficiency of dopamine. Now this drug will block the dopamine. So you will see some side effects um, like for the muscle um, coordination problems, um, gait problems, etc. etc. We'll, we'll talk about them in slides but just to think and just to main thing to remember about the dopamine it helps in muscle coordination and movements so side effect of this medication is tachycardia now um, this medication also blocks the aerogenic so it will produce the effect like cholinergic etc etc and it will also uh, block some of the cholinergic receptors so it will cause the anticholinergic uh, side effects as well uh, but tachycardia is the main one, sedation, dizziness. We'll talk about this neuroleptic malignant syndrome and extrapyramidal side effects in the, in the next slides. Uh, it will increase the risk of CVA. It can cause the weight gain and obesity. It can cause diabetes. It can increase the triglyceride. Um, can cause the osteoporosis. Um, and one of the main side effects that people usually stop using this medication is decreased libido and menstrual disorder due to the increased prolactin level. Um, so this is the side effect, unwanted side effects, and many people, young people, which will stop using these medications due to this one of the main side effects. Uh, and can cause diabetes mellitus too, since this medication increases the um, increases the resistance. Uh, of insulin and uh, medication affects the glucose metabolism. Now the main two side effects we really need to know about this medication is neuroleptic malignant syndrome and extrapyramidal side effects. And these are the side effects are often 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 tested on the NCLEX as well. Let's take a look. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome which is really rare in this a particular class of drugs in atypical antipsychotic this is very common you will you will see in conventional antipsychotic um, but still we need to know these are the really um, serious side effects severe side effects um, neuroleptic malignant syndrome signs and symptoms are confusion fever muscle rigidity high serum creatinine level 
and this one could be really fat fatal. Um, so you need to re uh, teach patients who are on this medication. If they see this uh, side effects, call their doctor immediately. Um, there are some extrapyramidal symptoms as well. Now, extrapyramidal symptoms um, are caused by block due to the blockage of dopamine receptors or dopamine neurotransmitter in the brain. As we talked, like dopamine is really important in the coordination and muscle movements. So these extrapyramidal symptoms are caused by blockage of dopamine neurotransmitter in the brain. The first one includes acute dystonia, which is spasms of back muscles, tongues, and facial muscle. Akathisia, which is inability to rest and relax. Um, they'll be doing repetitively movements like with, the, with, with their hands, their feet, or some kind of movements, and they cannot rest. Or relax. This is um, Parkinsonium uh, includes tremor, shuffling gait, and mu muscle rigidity, which is same as the Parkinson disease. Because if you remember um, the pathophysiology of Parkinson, Parkinson is caused by decreased level of dopamine. Now this medication blocks the dopamine neurotransmitter in our brain so basically makes more uh, prone to cause Parkinson symptoms which is tremor, suffering gait and muscle rigidity this three of them. Um, the last one is tardive dyskinesia uh, which is unusual tongue or facial movements such as lip smacking, uh, pu puffing of cheeks, um, chewing repetitively so some kind of tongue and facial movements they'll be doing repetitively and I usually find um, hard to dis distinguish between this tardive dyskinesia and akathisia because akathisia is also inability to rest or relax which could be lip, lip smacking could be tardive dyskinesia so this is really hard to differentiate and really often uh, examined on NCLEX unfortunately but you you really need to remember if it is a lip or facial do the tardive uh, tardive dyskinesia and the rest of them is if they're doing repetitive movement with hand legs um, something like that then go with the akathisia okay um, some of the examples of this medication is risperidone quetiapine Olanzapine, clozapine, um, eripiprazole, um, ziprosidone, um, and peliperidone. Um, so this is uh, about the atypical anti atypical antipsychotic medication. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. Um, and thanks for watching.